What's happening with your hand? It's not just my hand. Okay. Um, it started with diabetes about five years ago. I was visiting the diabetes center. I was being given medicine and typical black man, I decided that, oh, I don't need any medicine. So I stopped taking medicine. It got complicated and then I got stroke about three years ago. If I get the meaning of the JJ you're telling me, it means that um, this one um, is motionless. Is that what it is? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It is completely motionless. If I take this thing off, I, I cannot move my hand. I cannot raise it. I cannot do anything. And uh, it's been like that for three years. It was the same with my leg. I have to commend Dr. Bruni and his kids. I got to them mistakenly about three years ago. We were going to shoot um, Check Yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to use the bathroom. And he saw me with my hand and my walking stick. That time I was in a wheelchair. That was the, after the stroke? Yes, the stroke was fresh. I was in a wheelchair. And he, he said, oh, I can help you. And he started treating me reflexology, that is putting pressure under my feet, because mm. that's where all the nerves end up. And after two, three weeks of reflexology, I got out of the wheelchair. And my leg is a bit stronger now. It's left with my my hand and my, my right face has also recovered because my mouth was like this, but uh, regular chewing of chewing gum, yeah, uh, got me back. How are you able to fend for yourself and pay your bills? Well, <clears throat> luckily, my family the Datsun family, we have a fishing business, Ocean Fisheries in Tema. I was the managing director for some years when this stroke happened. When I was retired, I was put on, a, a, I was put on an allowance, monthly allowance. And then when I reached 60, I get my social security as well. So with my company allowance every month, with my social security, and a little help with my friends here and there, and my wife, I'm able to survive. When you set up the act, was it lucrative? Were you making money from it? It has never been lucrative. Mm. So what was the motivation that what kept you in there? The, the passion. Mm. It was a, a passion. You know, um, the love. Do you have any regrets that you didn't look at the business aspect of this? Um, no regrets as such. Because in my case, I was working. So I was able to survive. I, at least I was getting my salary from the company. I wasn't so much dependent on my passion to keep me going. If you're called today to act, will you still act for free? To act for free, uh, <laughs> it can't happen. <clears throat> at least my transport, my costume, and at least something for the pocket. We were too happy to be on the set, entertaining people, making people happy. To us, at that time, our, our payment was to see people enjoying our performers. You know, Home Sweet Home. When Home Sweet Home was really 
Hi. I would go to the mall with my kids. And when you come, you won't be able to identify which are my kids and which are people's kids. All the kids around the place would come to me. They want to take pictures with me. They want to. And we felt, yeah, this is a life. Are you still a member of the Actors Guild? Oh, once you registered and you have your um, you have your membership card, membership card you're a member. I, I agree I'm not very active now. It's, it's difficult to go to meetings and get involved, but I am a member. Was the guilt there for you at the time that you were going through your stroke and all these times that you've had to go through these difficulties? Hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very sad to have to tell you the truth. I feel very sad to have to tell you the truth. But the guild, as a guild, to put it bluntly, no, has not been there. Mainly because I don't think we were able to put any structures that we were trying to, but I don't think it ever materialized that these are the structures that when you get to a certain point should happen to you. But I would say certain individual actors have, have, have been very comforting. Okay. That, that's my cue to put on my glasses. Okay. No, it's okay. okay. It's okay. okay. That's, that's, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, especially when I wear this sling, mm -hmm. everybody sees me and they feel that they have to help me. Mm. I'm coming into a place, they want to open the door, they want to do this. And there's something I hate because. You want to help me put on my glasses. Are you going to be there tomorrow mm. to put my glasses on for me? Who do you prefer? You prefer you think that the older folks will do better, or you think that look, we have done our part. Why don't we leave it for the young ones to come and take over and do something else? The start. I know we we started, but. It's a new start of everything is hard. So I don't believe the youngsters should do it alone. And I don't believe we, the old ones, should do it alone. I honestly believe that it should be mixed mix. A few of the old ones and a few of the young ones with fresh ideas should come together. After all, we the older ones are more into TV series and the younger ones are more into movie making. And today Ghana is the movie making that makes money. But is the TV series that gives you the experience. Most of the actors today, the young ones, they were involved in TV series before they became good actors and well-known. The government will never be interested in an industry that is not together. An industry that is not united that is not fighting one cause. The ministry, the government, they, they, they won't be interested because 
if they approach that industry, they won't know who to talk to. They won't know. That's why I'm saying somehow somebody should 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 take the horn by the bull. And I, the bull by the horn. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> you take the bull by the horn mm -hmm. and sit the older ones down, sit the young ones down. If it, if it means calling a meeting of everybody and asking everybody to offer themselves and we uh, vote and get uh, uh, a mix mix of them and we can hold a formidable front then we can get the government to look at us with this interview is another step telling the whole Ghana telling all those in the industry that yes it's time we we put our best foot forward so if tomorrow you hear that Actors Guild, there's an interim committee, interim something, calling a meeting, man, don't sit down. Let's go and take the next step. The argument has been that rather than we being distinct as Ghanaians, we have copied a lot of Nigerian um, the, the the way the jargons the uh, mannerisms in our movies so now though we say we're doing Ghanaian movies you end up looking more Nigerian it's partly true at the same time you can say that the Nigerians have copied us because I honestly believe that we we started getting the industry exciting before they did but they have the money power they ma they have the financial wealth and to get this industry moving you need money you need money and they have it and then we t we are too timid i remember during home sweet home a few occasions we went to look for locations and the kind of reaction we got from people who are not prepared to give out their houses or give out their uh, premises. They were thinking of what people will say about them. They weren't thinking of, oh, let, let me, you can use my house. It, it's going to help boost our industry. Nigeria is a bigger, bigger market. But I'm telling you, take a Nigerian actor and take a Ghanaian actor. Man, the Ghanaians will down the Nigerian in all aspects. I sit down and I watch Nigerian films and I can see the end before the end comes. I know exactly what's going to happen. Thank you very much. It's, it's a great joy to be with you. And I must say, I've been watching you every day on TV. And I, knew, I never knew you were, you were brilliant like that. <laughs> but I have to warn Israel to be very careful with you now. Yes, yes. So that's a message for Israel.